Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Modded Career with me, Oofal Spoofal. In this episode, we send Evesat to the big purple planet and also attempt to land on it. Kerbin Space Hotel sees its first expansion and four Kerbals embark on the first ever long duration stay in space. Hope you guys enjoy. The first launch of today's video is going to be Evesat on an Enceladus rocket. For those of you who aren't completely familiar with Enceladus, it's pretty much the workhorse of the space program. Prior to this mission, Enceladus had seen five flights, the first of which was a manned mission to the Mun. It has quite a large upper stage, which makes it ideal for interplanetary missions like these. As you can see, we've made it to orbit with almost 2 km per second of Delta V remaining, which is more than enough to get us to Eve. So, let's do it! Due to EVE's 2 degree inclination, we're going to need to do a correction burn at the descending node to bring our EVE periapsis down to a suitable altitude for our orbital insertion burn. Now that we have a nice looking EVE flyby, we're going to light up our upper stage engine one last time to perform an orbital insertion. The engine I'm using on this stage is in fact a Merlin 1C vacuum, which I believe was used on some of the earlier Falcon 9 rockets, although the Block 5 variants we see today use Merlin 1D vacuum engines. Alright, now that we're in an elliptical orbit of EVE, it's time to reveal my secret payload. You may have noticed this white interstage fairing on my craft, and hidden inside that is a small lander. The plan for this mission was to drop the lander inside its entry module into EVE's atmosphere, release it from the entry module and then parachute down to the surface. However, we wouldn't be able to do either of these last two things without power, and since the lander's solar panels are currently blocked by the fairing, we're going to need another way to power this thing. So, the entry module has a fuel cell to provide power until the final stages of descent. Great. Now we can sit back and enjoy the flamey re-entry. It would sure be a shame if our oxygen tank overheated, rendering our fancy new fuel cell completely useless. Uh, I'm going to try and distribute it a bit more evenly by rotating it, but the fairing is getting really hot. Oh no. Okay, okay I think that's... That's my... Okay, that's my tank. That was my oxygen tank. Oh, I think this is it. Yeah, so in hindsight, there were a lot of things I could have done much better here, uh, you know, such as overreacting a little more for entertainment's sake. Uh, but we also have a second problem, which is that our lander no longer has any means of generating electricity. No electricity means that we won't be able to jettison the entry module or deploy our parachute, which means no glorious science data for us. Wait, remember when we detached the lander from the rest of the craft? Well, take a look at the staging sequence. The parachute icon is light blue, which means that our parachute is armed. So, if we jump ahead to the final descent, our parachute does indeed deploy. And sure enough, we manage to gently splash down in the oceans of EVE. Now, we don't have any electricity, so we can't really do anything with this probe. But, we have gotten a fair chunk of money from landing on EVE, so I see this as a win. Anyway, let's head back to EVESAT. It's going to take a little time to collect all the data from EVE Space High, but once we have, we can perform a few burns at periapsis to move ourselves into a low orbit. This new orbit will allow us to map EVE's surface and also collect more data from Space Low. Now, you might think that the game might actually consider being nice to me after that EVE atmospheric entry incident, but Kerbalism had other ideas. With Kerbalism, engines have a chance of failing upon ignition. Each engine model has its own failure rates and rated ignitions, but in this case, each of our four Spider engines were rated for over 100 ignitions, so I find it kinda surprising that one of the engines failed on only the third ignition. Oh well, it looks like we're just gonna have to bite the bullet and carry on with three engines. A couple periapsis burns later and we're now in a 200km orbit about EVE. Now we can start mapping the surface and get those glorious science points. If you can cast your minds back to episode 7, yeah, I know that's a lot to ask, then you may remember that we have a space station in low carbon orbit, which I've only really used once. So I think that it deserves a little more love from us. Right now you're looking at yet another Enceladus rocket launching a new laboratory module. This module consists of a command pod, a lab and a habitation module. 
In total, this will increase the station's crew capacity from 11 to 19, and also give us access to some long-duration science stuff. Now that we're in low carbon orbit, you can see that we're ahead of the station, so we need to slightly raise our orbit so that we can allow the station to catch up with us. After a few small correction burns, we have a nice close encounter set up. So we can fire up those RCS thrusters and begin our docking maneuver. To help with this docking, I'm using the docking port alignment indicator mod, which I would highly recommend for people who are working with things such as space stations that require you to do a lot of docking. Once we've lined ourselves up, we can come in nice and slowly for our docking. And there we go. Carbon Space Hotel has never looked so majestic. Up until this point, going to space is something that has been reserved for highly trained Kerbonauts only. And although every Kerbal dreams of going to space, only a select few will actually get the opportunity to do it. That is, until now. Introducing Tito Kerman, the first ever space tourist. Tito will be spending a day in low carbon orbit before returning to Kerbin. If we can safely bring him back, we'll get 100,000 funds as a reward. Sounds like a good deal to me. And while we're here, let's also welcome May Kerman, our newest addition to the space program's roster. Alright, so as I hinted earlier, we are now accepting space tourism contracts. Right now, you're watching the first tourist mission of the space program launching on a Transporter 1 rocket. The Transporter 1 is a pretty simple rocket capable of sending three Kerbals to low carbon orbit. This mission is being commanded by none other than everybody's favourite pilot, Jebediah Kerman. We also have the freshly hired May Kerman and our trusty tourist, Tito Kerman. As I mentioned before, the objective of this mission is to send Tito Kerman to orbit, where he must stay for at least four hours. Once the time has passed, we'll bring him back to Kerman to collect our payment. Anyway, we've made it to orbit, so after a day of hanging around, we can fire up our service module engines one last time to perform a quick deorbit burn. Then we point our capsule's heat shield first and enjoy the descent back to Kerbin's surface. As you can see right here, I managed to get the descent profile pretty precise and we ended up landing about a kilometer away from the Kerbal Space Center. Not a huge deal, but it does mean we get almost all of the funds we spent on the capsule back. Anyway, Tito's happy and it looks like we're going to eat well tonight. While Jeb, May and Tito were in space, Val, Bill and Bob were preparing for their own flight, also on a Transporter 1 rocket. This time they're going to be up there for a little longer than just one day. Remember the fancy new module we just installed in Kerbin Space Hotel? Well, it's time to make use of that and do some long-term scientific research in space. Previously, the record for the longest stay in space was 30 days, but this time our Kerbinauts are going to be up there for quite a bit longer. I haven't decided exactly how long this is, but I'd imagine it's either until all of our scientific research is done, or they go completely insane. Whichever one is sooner. Anyway, the launch profile for this mission is pretty much the exact same as the last one, so let's skip ahead to our rendezvous. As you can see from the map screen here, we're currently behind the space station in our orbit, so we're going to lower our orbit just a little so that we can catch up with the space station. And just like last time, after a few minor correction burns, we've arrived. Once again, we'll be using the docking port alignment indicator mod to help us with our docking. And there we go. Val, Bill and Bob, welcome to Carbon Space Hotel. Hope you like it because you're going to be here for a while. Now, I could just leave it at three Kerbals, but to maximize our research efficiency, I decided to send up another scientist. At the moment, Bob is our only scientist, so we're going to hire Maxton. Maxton, welcome to the space program. Once again, we'll be using a transporter rocket, except Maxton is going to have to fly this one alone. Now, we all know how these launches go, so we might as well skip ahead a little bit. You might notice a weird new part underneath the engine, and no, that's not an extra fuel tank. I decided to bring up a couple extra science experiments so that we could process them in our science lab, wielding five times the science rewards. Anyway, I'm not going to make you sit through another rendezvous, so let's just cut to the docking. Nice. Now we have four Kerbals on Kerbin Space Hotel, ready to sacrifice their sanity for the sake of scientific research. Gene Kerman would be proud. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to show the newly redesigned like button how much you hate it by turning it into the blue like button, which has not received a redesign. The subscribe button also haven't received a redesign, but do you think I care? You're subscribing and there's not a damn thing you can do. If you want somewhere to chat with other KSP nerds, a link to my surely quite exquisite and intelligent Discord server can be found in the description, as well as a full list of all the mods I used in this video. Anyway, that's it from me. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.